Welcome to another edition of the VM Blog video interview series. Today, we're excited to have with us Kevin Cook from Liquidware joining us. Kevin, how's it going today? Welcome back. Thank you, gentlemen. Good to be here. Great to uh, see you guys, and uh, it looks like it's almost starting to get warm out. Yeah, we can only hope, right? <laughs> If we uh, let, let's go ahead and jump right in, I guess uh, we got a lot to cover. Um, I think it was about a year ago that we last spoke with you, and we talked about Liquidware's uh, spot check methodology and how it allows administrators to keep ahead of the EUC user experience issues. Uh, what do you want to focus on today? What, what's today's conversation? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh... As you say, uh, about a year ago, we released uh, a methodology. One of our SEs and a few folks in the field had implemented a methodology whereby uh, you leverage user experience metrics and other in-guest information as a means to focus on only those criteria and only those metrics that have the greatest impact, either positive or negative impact on the user experience. And that was a methodology that we released. There's a, a, a white paper, actually, I, I hope we can put a link to down below for folks to download and take a look at. But the methodology, and I'll, I'll speak just broadly to those steps, the methodology includes a sort of repetitive or, or, or cyclical rinse and repeat exercise whereby you look at your situation, you analyze it, you take a cursory look at uh, a data set, a curtailed or segment of your overall data set, and you narrow that field as a means to define a baseline, define a key performance indicator, and ultimately uh, take a more proactive stance in terms of identifying issues that are either high in profile, politically or otherwise, that we know contribute uh, greatly to a positive or negative user experience. And it allows you to proactively focus on these things as a mechanism to be far more proactive and automated in your uh, ultimate goal of delivery of user experience. This is, I should add, to any uh, end user workspace, whether that's a cloud delivered workspace, whether that's a physical PC or a physical uh, workspace, a multi-session host delivered or virtual workspace. I'm speaking broadly about any workspace whereby you've got a user sitting in front of a keyboard, a mouse, a screen, and as a central IT function, you're looking to maximize the user experience for that workspace. So is this a feature that's available now in uh, Stratosphere UX? Yeah, absolutely. So we've taken the methodology and our goal was to implement it as a feature in the product. Specifically, we wanted to create a view that was highly customizable one that could be shared throughout the organization, perhaps tiered to specific administrative groups or administrative users, um, as to define measures of success that can be easily managed and easily implemented. Broadly, this new Stratosphere UX advanced mode spot check function allows you to do a, a couple of key things. So provide a full 360 degree view of all of the relevant <coughs> workspace resources, usage, and overall uh, performance. Uh, it allows you to gain visibility for critical issues, both known and unknown, right? There are things that we think are going to be an issue, so we stay on top of them. But also there are things that either because they're very important applications or very important people within the organizations, we want to cast a safety net to ensure that the unknowns are captured as well. That we can identify and provide some type of basis for identification of bottlenecks and performance issues. But the most important thing, and really at the heart of the spot check uh, methodology and feature as we've implemented it, it's about helping to establish real world thresholds for key uh, components of your architecture, key applications, key constituencies, key groups, users, machines, et cetera, and create a baseline of performance or minimum threshold of performance by which you can then gauge any normal or abnormal behaviors. I think uh, rather than talk about this anymore, maybe it might make sense to just do a demonstration and perhaps show you what this looks like within the product. Yeah, absolutely. We'd, uh, we'd love to have you walk through some of those features. Cool. So 
uh, I'm going to walk through some static uh, pictures and sort of describe for you what you're seeing. So uh, first, of course, we, we log into Stratosphere and, and we land on the Stratosphere search page. We'll, we'll jump over one uh, tab to our spot check function. And this is the new uh, spot check environment that you're looking at here on the screen. This new environment uh, has some default and published um, uh, uh, versions, or I should say uh, th threshold configurations. Uh, if I grab the pull down, the main pull down, you'll see here that uh, at the top of the list, we've got Kevin's awesome spot check. We're going to use that as an example today. But you'll also see some example published spot checks that were created by some of our team here at Liquidware, as well as some default spot checks that come uh, shipping with the product. The defaults are uh, what we call a zero threshold or anything that returns a non-zero value. There's a minimum or a medium threshold, which is uh, about one standard deviation or an 80 percentile. And then we have a higher threshold, which is uh, sort of a two standard deviation or 95-ish uh, percentile uh, limit. But let's jump in. We're going to look at Kevin's awesome spot check, and uh, we're going to jump into the set threshold feature. And the first thing you'll notice is that we can load, we can save thresholds, we can publish thresholds, and this makes it very, very easy to set up a threshold and be able to uh, create one that is shared for your entire IT administrative group. Perhaps you've got a team uh, or maybe it's a help desk or an operations team that are focused only on certain segments. You can create standardized spot check thresholds and publish them only to those groups who are enacted or entitled to support specific functions or specific uh, environmental uh, baselines for your organization. So we've tried to make it very, very easy for you to create sort of standard across the board KPIs or SLAs and then disseminate and push that down to lower tiers within IT to ensure that from an administrative perspective, everybody can make best advantage of the resources, the information, the metrics that we're collecting for you. So as we dive in, um, one of the things that I'll do is uh, I'm going to turn on a, a group filter and look at only virtual machines, for example. Again, just by way of example, this is uh, the granularity and the way that you can edit individual thresholds and define key performance or key attributes by threshold. I'm going to then turn on uh, in the view menu, you'll see uh, various things. And what I've done here first is I've actually searched throughout my entire database schema for any metric that includes the search term latency. And you'll see that there's uh, four or five of them that have popped up. If you're more familiar with the Stratosphere API or you're more familiar with the actual database schema names, the threshold names that as they appear in the database schema, you can actually turn on what we call raw column mode. And in this case, you'll see the raw column names for those latencies. And the one that we're going to focus in on right now is, is actually called uh, average ping latency in milliseconds. So by default, average ping latency and the threshold uh, settings within this spot check uh, allow you to define connection latency in milliseconds as equal to, greater than, or less than, and then you plug in a latency value. So if you just simply wanted to know any application that has a latency value greater than X, less than X, or equal to X, this is how you would set it. We're going to actually go one step further and use a custom setting. So we're going to click on the toggle custom. And you'll see now that the same spot check methodology now has a Boolean AND in place. So in this case, we're going to look for any connection latency in millisecond greater than 100 milliseconds and has a process name or throughout the entire schema has the text string of Outlook included in it. This is a way, uh, by way of example, for us to look at uh, and leverage the network process metrics that Stratosphere collects. Stratosphere normally collects network process metrics, and if that network process opens up a network port, we can capture information on that network port. Things like source information, destination information, jitter, latency, uh, et cetera. So we not only know the consumption and utilization metrics of the process itself, but we can tell 
all of the wire level detail for that process if it's also opening up a port on the network. So in this case, we're doing so for any process that includes the name Outlook. We'll then save that. And uh, this is a sample of what that output would look like on the screen now. And what you see here is all of the users who are running applications where there is a process in their application group that includes the string Outlook. And in this case, you see some of these are part of the Office suite. Some of these are part of uh, various components or, or different versions of Outlook. But ultimately, these are all people in the 24-hour period of today that are running applications that include the word Outlook. We've included the destination domain in, in the column. So you'll see we've done a reverse DNS lookup uh, for Salesforce as one of those, one of those uh, destinations that are, that are consuming or that one of our in-guest metrics are connecting outbound to. And then lastly, you're seeing only those that have a latency greater than 100 milliseconds. And you see that list. I hope this um, showcases how this can be used. And in some cases, I've created one, right? Kevin's awesome spot check. We're only really looking at one thing. But perhaps you want to look at multiple things, right? Maybe I want to look at Outlook in conjunction with um, server utilization or CPU utilization or CPU queuing or RAM, right? There's literally hundreds of metrics that we can pull into a spot check. Most spot checks are comprised of eight to 10 metrics overall. This is just one metric in one example of a spot check I've created. So Kevin, this feels like a really interesting way to use the Stratosphere UX. Uh, any chance you could share a bit more about how you see customers you know, leveraging the new feature? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's a number of ways and a, and a number of um, places where we see the spot check being used. So certainly, um, and most obviously, I think it's, it's a proactive check on the health of those attributes that are going to be most important to your environment. In this case, we've chosen email uh, and, and obviously email important to many within most organizations. But uh, it allows you to focus on those applications or those attributes that are going to be most important and that you want to take a proactive stance on trying to ensure you know in real time when those things are above a certain minimum value or above a minimum certain threshold that you've set. Uh, it's a way for you to uh, look at things and identify them uh, before users start to broadly complain about workspace performance or application performance, um, when perhaps shared infrastructure levels may be getting a bit higher than normal, or when you're validating a new application that you've rolled out or a new version that you've rolled out. Uh, it's a means for you to provide on ongoing documentation. Maybe it's for chargeback or showback purposes. Uh, maybe you've defined measures of success for IT, whereby um, IT is not deemed successful in any 90-day period unless certain applications are performing to minimum thresholds or minimum values. It's a way broadly, again, to define success, quantify that success, and then look and measure for that success in a, in a very deterministic way uh, that is easy uh, to operationalize, easy to manage, and easy to disseminate throughout the organization. Hey, Kevin, that's some pretty cool stuff. Um, I was wondering, before we go, could you maybe comment on something else like uh, product futures, the market, EUC and the cloud, you know, some of that stuff that uh, Liquidware is involved in? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, most near term, if you're going to be out at uh, the Citrix event next month, uh, we'd love to uh, to see you. So come on by uh, Citrix Synergy uh, next month. Um, you know, in terms of what we've got going on, always new product releases coming out <clears throat> on the horizon with Stratosphere. We're very excited about a process optimization feature that uh, allows us to now take action on an environment and throttle and uh, look at application usage or look at processes that perhaps are stealing resources and having a negative effect on the user experience broadly. Stratosphere now can take action and automatically throttle and de-elevate some of those processes to ensure users have a persistent user experience. Uh, this is great for extending the life of perhaps older machines or uh, helping you to realize the best user experience on highly dense 
uh, pods or uh, server-based infrastructures. Uh, but great features coming out uh, in, in the very near term uh, as it relates to Stratosphere. We've also got some great things going on with our cloud partners. So look for us uh, to include cloud-based consumption um, licensing for Stratosphere in Amazon Workspaces. We've got now a native uh, deployment and Stratosphere is available natively in uh, Microsoft Azure, and soon uh, we will also have it available in uh, in uh, in Google. So some great things going on in the cloud as well. Uh, just a great time to be an EUC. Very exciting stuff, and uh, always new things to see. Great. Well, thanks for uh, taking the time to speak with VM Blog, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at Citrix Synergy. Uh, me and David will both be there. Uh, as we always are, <laughs> checking out all the new great stuff that comes out and uh, doing product interviews and stuff like that. So um, thanks again for taking the time to speak with us. Absolutely my pleasure. Always great to speak with you guys. Um, thanks so much and uh, have a great day, everybody.